as I prepare to ship and donate these two bikes to the Skip Barber Motorcycle Museum, this is my goodbye video to the Gripper, a 2013 Y-Chrome custom chopper, and this was the last chopper that I built. I've been on American V-Twins for almost three decades now, and the first one I was on was my dad's Sportster when he bought it, I rode it home. The guy actually went inside and threw up because he was so sad to see his bike go. And riding it home, feeling those two cylinders with that common crank thundering and resonating with the heartbeat, it all suddenly made sense why people love their Harleys and their choppers so much. Soon after it clicked with that first Sportster ride, I bought my own Harley. It was a basket case. Dad and I rebuilt it, and I had that for almost a decade of adventures. After rebuilding the engine yet again at about 10 years on that old shovel head, I built my first ground up chopper. And I started my own chopper shop, building custom motorcycles like this. And over those years, I always had a shop bike that I could ride around. There was one brief period for a few months where I didn't have a shop bike to drive around. And I noticed that when I had a bad day, not having something to get on and ride just drove me insane. So not wanting that to happen again, I bought a little Sportster. It was an 883 Hugger, it was converted to a 1200. I did a whole bunch of work, but I had a lot of fun on that bike. It was such a blast. Eventually, I got the itch to build a one more chopper. So I dusted off the parts in the corner and started to prepare for my last V-twin creation. The frame that had been collecting cobwebs in the corner of the garage was a War Eagle Wrath frame and it had the arced backbone and the arced down tubes, which I kind of preferred this pro street style, a little bit longer and low, as opposed to the very tall choppers. That was just my personal preference. And on this one, I ended up chroming the frame just for something different I hadn't done before. It feels taller than it actually is because the seat is so low. You can see the drop seat on this one, pretty close to the ground. So when you sit on it, even though the bars don't look that high, they're almost level with the shoulders. Because it has such a low seat, that meant that the oil bag that came with the frame is actually a reduced capacity. And I didn't like the idea of that, especially with this big engine. So I installed this bigger Moon Eyes four quart oil bag instead, and I put it right out in the front where it'd catch that airstream and keep it cooler for the bike. The frame takes a 300 rear tire, and I had designed the wheels myself. So both wheels were custom machined, and I just love the way they came out in chrome. To push it down the road, I installed a TP Engineering 121 inch engine, which means that each cylinder is a liter capacity. And for the transmission, I chose a TP Tran. It's a right side drive with the 300 tire. You have to do right side drive. And that's equipped with the Jim's gears inside. And the two are connected by a Primo open belt drive. You can see a lot of my custom YCC accessories on this bike. In addition to the wheels, you also have the shift lever, the coil cover, the engine mount, and my favorite accessory, the air cleaner for the SNS carb. This engine wouldn't allow me to install one of my ignition covers because it has this solid nose cone on it already. And in the back are the engraved axle covers. For the exhaust pipes, I chose the Frankie Serrano designs. They were one of the few options that actually allowed for the 300 right side drive design but very happy with them. They look awesome. They sound incredible. The pipes were super loud when I first got it started, and it was a little bit hard getting it set up as far as tuning goes. I ended up having a triple X conversion done to the carburetor to get that dialed in a little bit better, and then I ended up putting in flexible baffles in each of these exhaust pipes just to give it a little bit of back pressure a lot of these V-twin engines, you almost need some kind of back pressure to keep it idling at the low end and allow you to really tune it through the whole RPM range. Once I got it dialed in though, this thing went like a rape date. I was super happy with how much power, how much kick it had. The downside is it's a thirsty beast. In fact, when Pick and I drove to Daytona, he had his night train. I think about the time I was running out of gas, he was not even 
halfway through his tank. The rear wheel is actually a split hub. You have to do that for this because the chain is on the right side being the big fat tire. And when the chain's back here, that's usually where your brakes are set up. So you have a split hub, which means you have a sprocket for your chain and your brake rotor on the same side. The nice thing is that leaves the other side view, if the saddlebag weren't in the way, to get a nice clear view of the open wheel. The split hub has an HHI brake, and for the front rotor, I put on a PM six piston brake. I went with some very clean and simple PM hand controls and foot controls, no garbage like blinkers or speedometer. The horn doesn't have one, but I have to put one on once a year just to pass state inspection. I made the seat pan by basically rolling some metal and welding some mounts to it. And then Inner Concepts in Jacksonville made the seat complete with a cool little suede axe insert on it. The tank came from Fat Cats and both fenders were from War Eagle. So what I did is the metal work to make them match. So if you see here on the front fender, the rear of it, it's got kind of a gothic point with two little points on the side. Same on the tank back and same on the rear fender. And these kind of match the look of the exhaust pipes as well. So it's kind of consistent in its theme of design. For the paint, I black primed it, and then I did white graphics on all three pieces so that when I did the candy teal over it, it created kind of these ghost graphics hidden in the background. And for the final touches, I put on Lime Time Green Flames with Pagan Gold highlights to give it a 3D real fire look. Uh, did that again on the front two pieces. And then of course the pinup girl riding the axe on the tank. For the tank cap, I ended up finding something that looked like one of the old knockoff caps from the wheels. So it kind of adds a little bit of a retro touch to this otherwise very modern bike. It was 2013 when the big old Avon rubber on this bike first hit the pavement. And that summer, Pick and I rode our bikes to the rally up in Austin, and I entered this in the show and got first place builder's trophy. Just a few months later, Pick and I were riding our bikes to Daytona Beach, Florida from San Antonio, and we did kind of a easy rider, made an adventure out of it. We stopped in Houston for a night. We spent a night in New Orleans. Didn't do the whole LSD uh, drug trip like the guys in the movie did, but made it to Jacksonville for a night and then Daytona Beach. And I did enter it in the Rat's Hole show in Daytona Beach. I got fourth place, which isn't the greatest. It was a thousand cc radical class, but I guarantee I rode this bike further than any of the other entries to get there in my class. The alternator actually gave up the ghost in Jacksonville on the way back. So we did have to trailer him, but really for a custom one-off chopper to have made it from San Antonio to Jacksonville or Daytona Beach, it's pretty good. A lot of these bikes aren't much more than bar hoppers, but I was pretty happy to see it get that far. And an alternator, I mean, it's, a, it's an electrical component. They fail just like the regulators and other stuff. I even tried my hand at leatherworking and made my first set of saddlebags for it. They're nothing fancy, but they were functional. Had one side for some clothes, and then the other side has a tool pouch that unrolls just to bring some basic tools along for the trip. The one thing I learned is that when leather gets wet, it sags, so I ended up burning a hole through one of the sides. It must be on the other side. Now in my youth, it wouldn't have bothered me at all to be riding this between the cornfields like my old shovel head, but unfortunately now it's become an issue. On that trip to Florida, it looked great. It sounded great, it rode great. One thing it was not great at was comfort. <laughs> the problem with the low seat and the way you have to sit on it is that there's really only one way to sit and it's like this and it puts all the weight on your tailbone and you can't even bring your feet back because the exhaust is right there so it's a little bit awkward plus with the seat low the way the legs are you have to almost keep them tight in which means your inner thighs are sore because the wind wants to keep blowing your feet off and I know these are gripes and it was a long trip, so it's gonna be expected. 
but they're just little things that wore on. My tailbone, the little discs in the tailbone were already 20 years ago about half the thickness they should be. So they've just got worse and worse over the years from basically riding bikes like this. I've had so much fun ripping around town with this thing to bars and restaurants and even more tearing through the hill country. And despite being what it is, a long <laughs> extreme rake chopper and everything, uh, I ride it pretty hard. In fact, when Pick was following me through the hill country one day, he pointed out, he said he kept waiting for my tips to grind on the pavement because it was leaned over far enough. He said, you gotta quit pretending it's a BMW when you're driving it. But you can see by the chicken strips, this thing's been leaned over pretty hard for a big old chopper. I absolutely love how this bike looks, how it sounds, how it performs, how it rides. But as cliche as it sounds, every time I get on it, my back is killing me and it just takes the fun out of it. It became like a friend that you have to avoid because every time you hang out with them, you're hung over for two days. Except in this case, it's my tailbone instead of my liver. The bike is also in the No Limits, No Regrets movie that I know the focus of that movie is more about the BMW doing its cross country run, but this is definitely part of the whole story as well. With the heart failing now and having the chance to donate this bike along with the BMW to the Skip Barber Museum, it just seemed like it's the right approach. I had to admit that I'm just not going to be able to ride this. It's not like my back is miraculously going to heal tomorrow. So it's time to send them both to a better place. And it makes sense to be in a museum, right? This is more, to me, rolling art than transportation. For me, this is so much more than just something to get from A to B or even more than my masterpiece. It becomes like a friend, right? And you spend time with it and you have highs and lows and you create adventures and memories together. And we've had 10 great years together. I just can't enjoy it like I used to. So it's time to move on to the museum where people can enjoy it long after I'm gone. If you haven't done so, please click the link below to subscribe, click the bell for notifications, and let's live for today.